Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Wills and Estate uh, Planning Frequently Asked Questions, a live Q&A. Today, we're going to be presenting some useful information that folks are dealing with in these challenging times, as well as taking your questions. If you missed last week's Facebook Live videos, you can check them out by clicking on the Videos tab of our Facebook page or by going to the Hunt Law Firm YouTube page. Last week, we presented COVID-19 and custody issues, where I was joined by Hunt Law Firm attorney David C. Adams, and we had a live Q&A on divorce, finances, and coronavirus with Sarah Cuddy, a local certified, uh, certified financial planner and a certified divorce financial analyst with Baird. My name is Alex Hunt, and I'm the founder and managing attorney at Hunt Law Firm. We serve clients in Katy, Cyprus, Harris County, Fort Bend County, Waller County, and the entire greater Houston area. And our practice is dedicated to family law, divorce, child custody issues, and our topic today, estate planning. COVID-19 has changed everybody's lives. And while we're following the county stay-at-home orders and the CDC state and county orders, Hunt Law Firm is 100% operational. We're all still working. We're serving our clients remotely and we're available for initial consultations with new clients through telephone or video conference. For more information on our firm, you can visit our website at familylawyerkatie.com. Now, before we talk about wills and estate planning, frequently asked questions, uh, I need to give some brief disclaimers. First, watching or participating in this video does not create an attorney-client relationship between you and Hunt Law Firm or any of its attorneys. And while we'd love to represent you, watching this video does not mean that we do. Second, nothing in this video should be taken as legal advice. Our goal in these videos is to educate you about estate planning, uh, but we can't give legal advice unless we know all the facts and circumstances of your case. So since we don't know the circumstances of your case, you should take all this information that's presented to you as exactly that, free and timely information. Okay, now that we have our legal disclaimers out of the way, if you can hear and see this video loud and clear, please hit the thumbs up button at the bottom right of your screen so we know that you're on board. And second, if you know a friend or a family member who needs to know about wills and estate planning or who might have questions about our topic today, you can share this Facebook Live with them now and hopefully they'll hop on and join us as well. Finally, if you have a question or comment about wills and estate planning, FAQs, please post it in the comment section below and we'll get to it if time allows. So today I'm happy to be joined by Hunt Law Firm attorney Nancy N. Trong. Nancy leads the estate planning and probate section at Hunt Law Firm and she's joining me via video conference and we're going to ask her a few questions about estate planning. Good afternoon, Nancy. Hey, Alex. How are you? Good. Okay. Let's start with the basics. What is estate planning? Why do I need it? Um, so estate planning is essentially the process where you lay out instructions on how you want your assets to be distributed upon death. Um, and so your estate answers the who, the when, and the how in writing. Um, and I know for most people, estate planning can be emotional, but the direct effect of not having a will can be costly. Um, first, if a person dies without a will, um, it means they die intestate. And in Texas, we have intestacy laws which determine who your beneficiaries are and then how much they'll each receive. Um, and so with an estate plan, you're able to appoint an executor. An executor is a person um, who basically executes your will. And so they're responsible for collecting assets, paying off debts, um, distributing property to your intended beneficiaries. Um, and so one of the advantages of having a will in the state of Texas is you get to choose an independent administration, um, which is more efficient and less expensive manner of administering your estate. Now, if there's no plan in place, um, you know, the determination of your, your administration can end up being more costly, more complicated, and you cause a lot of unrest for your family. Okay, so somebody walks into Hunt Law Firm and hires us to do estate planning. What do they get when they walk out, and what does that include? So essentially at Hunt Law Firm, we offer a flat fee simple estate planning package um, to individuals and to married couples. Um, and so our package includes a custom will and five to six ancillary medical documents, which include a declaration of, appoint of appointment for, of a guardian for your child, uh, which declares who you wish to be appointed of the guardian of your child in the event of your death or incapacity. Um, we also have a declaration of guardian for yourself, um, which is the same thing. 
Um, and then we have a durable power of attorney, which allows you to designate an agent and a successor agent um, to make critical decisions on your behalf for financial, tax, business, insurance, retirement, and things of that nature. And then we have the appointment of disposition of remains, which is a document where you designate an agent to make decisions concerning your burial, cremation, and any other special wishes. Um, and then the last two are your medical power of attorney, which includes a HIPAA form. Um, and this authorizes your agent to make healthcare decisions on your behalf. Um, and the last thing is the directive to physician. It's also known as a living will, and it directs your physician to either withhold or continue life-sustaining procedures in the event of an incurable or irreversible condition. Okay. So there's a lot. Uh, how, how does the process work? Uh, great question. So first, um, the potential client will complete the Hunt Law Firm estate planning worksheet. Uh, we'll email this to you either before you come in for your consultation or you can grab one off of our website under the resources link. Um, then we schedule the initial consultation. Um, a Hunt Law Firm attorney will review your worksheet, will discuss the different assets, what are probate assets versus non-probate assets, the process from start to finish. Um, and if you're ever unsure of who you want to designate as an agent or an executor, we can explore the different options with you by discussing with your family members um, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, and we can design an estate plan together. Now, once we have a plan in place, um, a Hunt law firm attorney will draft your documents. We send them to you for review, and then we can schedule a follow-up meeting to address any outstanding questions or concerns or make revisions um, according to your request. Um, and so the final step is the signing ceremony. In normal circumstances, our office provides two disinterested witnesses and a notary, um, and your Hunt law firm attorney will direct the signing ceremony. And then your documents become effective the, the same day. Okay, so Nancy, you mentioned in normal circumstances, and these definitely aren't normal times. So um, how has estate planning changed because of all that's happening surrounding the COVID-19 coronavirus situation? It's a great question. It's the question of the times. Um, and so the Texas state code basically requires that you have two disinterested witnesses at your signing ceremony. Um, a disinterested witnesses are simply folks that are over the age of 14 and who aren't family that will benefit from your will. And however, so with the stay at home orders and social distancing, um, the recommendations that they have in place right now, it's been difficult for us to gather and conduct a, the signing ceremony at our office through our normal procedures. Um, so we have a few options and it's entirely up to you and your family how you wish to proceed. Um, one is that Hunt Law Firm drafts your documents. We wait for the stay at home orders to um, be lifted or the circumstances change and then you can schedule the signing ceremony at our office. Um, two. We've contacted several different mobile notaries, and although we don't endorse them and we don't guarantee any of their services, we are aware that certain mobile notaries are still operating and can provide two disinterested witnesses for you at an additional cost. Um, and so our office will set up a video conference uh, with you and the mobile notary, and your attorney will conduct the entire cer signing ceremony um, remotely to ensure all the steps are properly carried out. And three, um, the last option is if you're able to secure at least two disinterested witnesses, such as neighbors or coworkers, we can still execute your will signing ceremony um, without signing the self proving affidavit that requires a notary, which can be signed at any time later. And um, we're happy to discuss these options with you further during your consultation. All right. Well, that's great, Nancy. And thank you. And I know that you and the entire HLF team have been working really hard on a really meaningful estate planning pro bono project these past few weeks. So uh, today we're really proud to launch here live the Hunt Law Firm Cares Estate Planning Program. And uh, to support our community heroes, Hunt Law Firm is going to provide simple estate planning packages to first responders and healthcare professionals in the Katy Cypress area completely free of charge. Uh, complex estate planning and packages for spouses can be completed at a reduced rate, which is 50% off of our regular rates to be precise, through the end of 2020. And we're launching this program for the first 25 first responders and healthcare professionals, but we're hoping to work efficiently, uh, as efficiently as possible, so that we can open this project up to even more folks who will be able to benefit from it. Uh, if you are eligible or you know somebody who would be eligible, uh, you can sign up, you can share the information, you can find full details on the program and a lot more information uh, than I've given you here today at familylawyerkatie.com slash cares. That's familylawyerkatie.com slash cares. 
And this is a really special project, one that we've been planning for some weeks now, and we're really excited to launch it here with you today. So if you're watching, please spread the word, please share this post, please share the website and let folks know if you think they could benefit because we certainly appreciate all that they're doing for us. So uh, if you do have a question for us now, we still have a little bit of time left. We have some questions that we got ahead of time, but if you do have questions, we'll try to um, get to them before we end here today. So one question that we had, Nancy, uh, from before uh, today's live session was, do I need estate planning if I'm unmarried or I don't have, I don't have anything? That's a great question. I get that question a lot. And the answer is yes. Um, everyone needs estate planning. As soon as you start working, um, you should really consider getting an estate plan in order. And so most people think that, you know, you have to be older or you have to have a large estate to have a will, but that's a complete misconception. Um, life is unpredictable and having a plan in place can really help settle any unrest in your family. If you do end up getting married down the line, you have children, things change, um, you can talk to an estate planning attorney about updating your documents, and that's definitely something we can help you with. That's great. Uh, the second question that was sent to us before today's session was, my uncle told me that I need a trust to avoid the probate process completely. Is this true? So I'm going to say no, but we're going to unravel that a little bit more. Um, so there's this miscon misconception that probate is this big, bad, scary process. And although it's not a walk in the park, um, probate can be handled pretty painlessly through an independent administration directed in your will. And each individual and each family is different, so we shouldn't assume that everybody needs a trust. Um, depending on your unique needs, you can tailor the right estate plan to best suit your goals. Um, and for some individuals, that may be um, a trust or it may be a will, but that's not always the case. All right. Well, we have a question that came in. Um, I'm going to get it up here uh, from Mandy. Hi, Mandy. Can you please explain how the probate process works after a person is deceased? Sure. Um, so one thing that I would recommend you um, taking a look at, Mandy, on our website, we actually have our resources tabs and we lay out um, the steps of a probate of a probate case. Um, so in a nutshell, it starts out with filing an application with the original will. Um, and so courts have actually been taking that electronically. Uh, normally, we would mail in the original will to get that verified. Um, and then after that, we go ahead and we do um, a hearing so that we can have um, witnesses or um, the executor or whoever is going to step up and take take um, that responsibility of executing the will. Um, we have the judge sign off on orders and then we do what's called an inventory, which is exactly what it sounds like. We inventory all the assets, the debts, and then we basically try to get everything in order so that the executor can do their job. Um, and then at the end of it, if there's any outstanding debts, you go ahead and pay them, you distribute the assets the way that um, the um, testator had wanted it done. And then at the end of it, we close out your case and that's basically uh, a simple version of the probate process, but I do recommend going ahead and taking a look at our step-by-step -step process. And Nancy, where did you say that we could find that? That's under the resources tab on our website. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, another question that we get a lot, I know that you get a lot, is, um, you know, I don't, I don't need to write a will because I could just tell my family members what I want, right? Wrong. So the state of Texas does not recognize oral wills or verbal wills. A will has to be written and signed by the testator um, following the signing ceremony requirements in the uh, estate code. And so by telling one family member you want something, it raises a handful of concerns regarding your intentions that could lead to a long, drawn out, and ex expensive probate process. Okay, so let's say that you die, you don't have a will, you're married. Do all your assets just go to your spouse? No. Um, and so we can explain a little bit more about that. So when you die without a will, uh, the state intestacy laws come into effect. And so Texas follows the community property rule, which is something that we explain in family law, but you may also have some separate property. Um, if so, separate property is distributed differently. So a good reference is the Harris County, um, Harris County probate court number one actually has an intestacy chart, which shows you uh, graphically how assets are passed without a will. Um, even so, I think it's still important to consider that are other medical and property documents that we prepare for you um, so that your spouse can make certain medical financial decisions on your behalf if you become incapacitated. Okay. 
One question that we often get when we get to that part of the process is uh, you mentioned an executor. Who can be my executor? So anyone who's over the eight age of 18 without any prior felonies can be an executor. You can designate anyone who has capacity, even someone who is a non-resident of Texas. Um, however, we do recommend, you know, designating an out-of-state agent can raise other concerns handling your Texas estate. Okay. And then the last question that we had provided to us uh, from before today's session, and one that a lot of folks ask is, what happens with my kids if I pass away? So in the unlikely occurrence that you and your spouse are deceased at the same time, what we can do is we can set up a contingency trust inside your will. Um, so if children are still minors at the time of um, you and your spouse's death, they can't inherit property, they can't manage property. And so a contingency trust allows you to designate a trustee. The trustee will manage those assets until your children reach the age that is designated in your will. Um, and a contingency trust can set out distributions for purposes such as health, educational, maintenance, and support as well. All right. Well, those are all the questions that we have today, Nancy. So I certainly appreciate you joining me. And um, this was, this was uh, really helpful. And um, I hope that you know, folks will take advantage of the HLF CARES program. We're really excited uh, to launch that today and, and we'll be sending out some more information. So thanks a lot, Nancy. No problem. Thank you, Alex. All right. That's all we have for you today. Uh, thanks very much for joining us for Wills and Estate Planning FAQs, a live Q&A with uh, Alex Heim and Nancy Trong, brought to you by Hunt Law Firm. If you did find this video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you thought of somebody who could use this information or the, the HLF CARES program, then you can share it with them now and we'd appreciate that. And remember that we'll be back later this week uh, with another Facebook Live, touching on some more of the divorce and child custody related issues that are created by COVID-19. So remember, if you need legal representation on an estate planning or a family law matter, please visit our webpage. It's familylawyerkatie.com. And make sure to follow us on Facebook. My name is Alex Hunt for Nancy Trong, the entire team here at Hunt Law Firm. I hope you have a great day.